Hey everyone, Sean here with Unearthed Treasures. I've seen Levi's red tab, white tab, black tab, Big E, silver tab, but I've never found a pair of Levi's I fa that I found thrifting today. Stay at least till the pants section to see what I found. I will also be giving out my thoughts on tips and tricks while thrifting each section. If you don't know who I am, I'm a part-time reseller who works a full-time day job and resells on the side. If you see I missed a high value item that resells well, please let me know in the comments as I'm always willing to learn and receive feedback. My goal is to share knowledge so you can get better and hopefully you can share knowledge with me and I can get better. Win-win. So let's get started. If you haven't seen my first rule of thrift club videos, spoiler alert, it is to go for the racks and the bins first. Got to get there before everyone else. Assume the rest of the store has been looked over 100 times prior to you. And yes, you can still find things in the store after 100 resellers and shoppers have been there. I'm mostly looking for items that will be that will net me a decent profit. Vintage tags, cross collectability like good jacket with a sports team on it, good material, cashmere, silk, wool, linen, etc. Or a great print or theme. On top of that, I'm looking for non-mass produced items. Uh, the value goes up the more rare it is. Um, you're not going to find the best of the best here on the racks or at the normal Goodwill stores. In my area, the Goodwill stores all funnel their really nice items to uh, the downtown Sacramento thrift store. That's where their bougie stuff goes. Uh, so if you want to uh, thrift that, that's a place where you go find uh, probably the old rare Tommy Hilfiger type uh, outfits and other vintage uh, findings, vintage jeans, etc. There's still a decent price, um, but it's a little bit marked up. Yeah, on video I didn't find anything here uh, of note. Uh, I was looking for band tees and different things right here. But uh, I did pick up a champion hoodie, sweatshirt, full zip hoodie of the University of Stanford. Uh, so that was a good thing. I think what happened is when I'm looking in the future here at the yellow bin, um, they brought a second rack right next to it. and I forgot to uh, video uh, through that. Uh, but get in these bins. People always look over the top, but they never dig. Dig all the way to the bottom. Make sure you see every inch of this. Um, you want to try and find uh, things that other people aren't willing to look for. I'm not a big sorcerer of baskets and things like that, so I always pass. I wouldn't know what basket to pick up. Uh, you kind of got to do the research, and um, I try to pick an item a week to research. Um, I get interested in this camera um, photo stand. I want to do more research. I think this is probably one of the next areas since now that I'm getting into doing videos, I kind of want to learn camera equipment and gear. So you do see a lot of camera uh, equipment at these stores, but I don't know which ones actually are worth money or not and worth picking up. There's a paintball mask. Um, you start to get in here and look uh, at bags. They ha usually have bags of toys. I do really well with bags of toys. Um, if I can't sell them on eBay, I can sell them uh, at my uh, swap meet stand. I did see a baseball glove, but it was a child size. If you find the older, larger baseball gloves, those are worth looking the model number up. Because uh, sometimes I find $150 uh, baseball gloves. And that's always a good day when you find a $150 item at the thrift. And you can see at this Goodwill, they put five carts in a row right next to their clothing rack. It's like they wanted us to pick through it so they didn't have to put it up, uh, which is great. Um, so I'm stoked I might come here more often just to see if, because if I'm the first one at five carts every day, uh, that ups my odds at getting a little bit more items uh, to put in my eBay store. Um, the bats were youth. I'm, I don't typically pick up bats uh, that are youth size. But I definitely look for nicer bats that are in the softball, baseball realm, um, D Marinis, that kind of thing. Um, and I look up models of different Eastons, um, but they I don't typically pick up the use sizes. Some purse I never seen the brand name of. I really I got to get more comfortable with purses. Uh, every time I find a very um, designer purse I just you can almost always tell that they're um, not the real uh, manufacturers made purse 
and I don't want to be selling knockoffs. First, it's not legal, but second, I want to sell good product that lasts forever, right? And um, brands like Coach and Gucci and all that, they make really quality stuff that'll last forever. I would love to sell their stuff, but how do you determine that you have the real authentic one? That's uh, a little bit harder, and I don't necessarily want to pay, um, especially when the thrift stores are charging up at the thrift store for these items. Then you got to pay for authentication before you can sell it, or you risk uh, getting a ding in your store for selling uh, bad merchandise. You can sell at the swap meet. It's still illegal, but I mean, these thrift stores aren't supposed to be selling knockoffs, and they are doing it all day, every day. So there's obviously a lack in federal regulation here. Um, this is a Mickey plush. They want four bucks for it. I used to pick these up, but you get uh, Disneyland, Disney World items are about as common as they get. So you get about uh, eight to twelve bucks uh, for most Disney uh, newer uh, generation stuff. So you find something older, that's the, when I start looking it up um, to see if there's any uh, potential there. Stay on the lookout for all these kind of snow gloves. Oh my goodness, Gore-Tex, different brands snow gloves. Uh, people love going to the snow. They love great brands. They need to keep their hands warm. Look for these things. They usually are between uh, two to five bucks, and they can sell uh, between fifteen and thirty plus dollars. Um, this pair had a hundred percent sell through, um, and I want to say it sold for around fifteen dollars. And they wanted like three ninety nine. So I didn't end up getting it. Uh, I didn't want to sink. Uh, five bucks into something that I might make five bucks off in the next 90 days um, let me know in the comments do you uh, is that a good turnover for you do you invest your money like that I'm trying to get better at not sinking my money into stuff that takes a while unless it's gonna bring a high profit um, but you know in the storage uh, locker business where I do buy some of my product material to sell I have to sell long lead items I just got to make sure that they're worth it. This is a bag of porcelain face dolls. Um, I, try, I think I, I show you on the screen here that it's going to sell for $9.99. Um, there's roughly like $15 to $20 dolls in here. So just the easy math for me is I could get a dollar a doll um, at the swap meet probably, even more maybe. And I imagine, I looked it up, they, they kind of sell between 10 and $25 and I don't know if I have the right ones but it was worth the risk to buy it so I did end up picking that up and we'll see after I go to list them if I put them in eBay or if I sell them at the swap meet uh, at a discount but this is my happy place digging in the bins um, with no other competition here there was nobody next to me I was seeing all the fresh bins uh, first um, so that's that's awesome. This is the Magic 8 Ball game. I've never seen that before. Um, I didn't take the time to look it up. I'm really kind of burnt out on trying to sell games anymore. Um, they take forever. Here's a Civil War set, but it's like they had burn marks at the end of the handle. So I, I didn't even look it up because the quality wasn't there to see if there was potential. But I know that Civil War sets can bring money. Here's a fancy clock that I do a horrible job at showing you. I think they wanted $15 for it. Um, that's another tip. Like if they're marking it up, look it up. Why Why do they think it's so valuable? Maybe. And the general rule at the Goodwill that I, the Goodwill's area that I shop at, is they mark things down a third of the price from eBay. Now, they sometimes look at that wrong and they mess it up and they either overcharge or undercharge. But... It's worth looking up because sometimes they're they're using a listing that's a broken item as their thing to mark a third off from. So yeah, broken it was worth thirty bucks, but working it's one hundred and twenty. Um, so do your research. If it looks nice, if it feels like quality, um, look it up. See if there's value. Um, get rid of any of your preconceived notions of what you think is valuable, especially if you're new. 
um, you just realize how much you don't know about what's worth money and what's not worth money. Um, so you really need to do the research in every category. Um, I picked up this Tudors because it was sealed. Uh, they want $5 for it. Unfortunately, most of these aren't going to be uh, good pickups at the thrift. But there, believe it or not, there are uh, DVDs that are worth $100 um, or more. So you definitely got to do your research to go on, on eBay, sold complete, um, highs to lowest, and look at what's selling uh, right now. Because that list can change in a year when everybody's got a copy. Uh, but right now, what, what is selling for money? Because uh, there's some trend, there's some reason why everybody wants a copy. And what version is it? Um, there's... Uh, sometimes deleted scenes uh, that were deemed inappropriate so they made a limited amount of copies and then uh, there's all the new versions out there um, so do your research and look um, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video on uh, be on the lookout bolo uh, type items for DVDs um, I, I used to like to really buy bulk DVD lots but since I do storage lockers so much uh, I get enough material. I look almost every one up. Um, and then whatever is not really that valuable, I sell at the swap meet, uh, two bucks a pop, and just offload it that way. Uh, it seems to make me money. All right, one of my favorite places, uh, video games and CDs. Um, you're really almost never going to find Mario, but sometimes you do, so don't discount it. Find out when your Goodwill puts out the games and if you have a schedule where you can be there at that time, you're the first one to the Mario's. Um, there are other games worth money, but you got to do the research. Um, I love selling CDs now. I took a course from Jason Thrifts, um, and I was selling uh, media before, and I knew about Discogs and everything. But his uh, teachings and way of uh, helping me understand what may or may not be valuable... Uh, help me to start to sift through these faster and not scan every single one So I'm able to put down the ones that um, Are really have no chance of being uh, of value and move on and just do a limited number of scans on the ones that are um, Right now I'm looking up everything Jimmy Buffett after he passed most times Jimmy Buffett's not worth anything but I'll tell you, the live ones seem to be going for some good money. I found uh, somebody's collection uh, in a Goodwill at the, the bougie one downtown. And there was, the live ones were selling between like $50 and $150. Um, so be on the lookout for Jimmy Buffett uh, live CDs, not the common ones. Um, this is a Green Day uh, CD with no barcode on it, which... I, I like Green Day anyway, but definitely looking up Green Day No Barcode um, and seeing if there's any value there. And it's hard to tell right here, but there's actually some value on these Green Day CDs. And I'm just like blown away because I wasn't expecting it to be on a Green Day. But early releases of artists that before they were mass produced are worth money. So um, get in there, make sure you find the ones that look like they're not on the major brand label that they're on today might be worth some money like look for the Taylor Swift uh, before she got put on her major brand that kind of thing um, also quality control while you're here make sure you don't have a broken disc it's the right disc I don't know how many times I bought a CD uh, and then I get home and it's the wrong disc completely and listed it and sold it sometimes and the buyer who also saw the same photos didn't notice it either um, so quality control big time in this department um, I don't know if you also see I have that Scooby-Doo here I had never seen this before so it just interests anything just off off the cuff different um, I'm gonna look it up just to see um, I expected it to be worthless and this thing was really going for some good money and I couldn't believe it um, and so very few copies online on eBay and then I went sold completes and it has a good track record of selling at that price point. 
Um, and it was selling pretty much like 100% or 200% sell through. So if it's in there, if it's still good quality, that's a great pickup at a thrift store for four bucks uh, to go make. I think it was like 35 to $50. I can't remember. Um, and obviously the, uh, I'm watching the view you're watching right now and talking voice over it. Um, I can't see the price either. So I will try to do better in the future about um, getting closer so you can see. I did show the price that was cost me three ninety nine. I am just so in love with his Led Zeppelin album. Um, unfortunately, I've never seen it on CD, so I was looking it up. But on record, you see that album, at the original record. I don't care, like f if it's five bucks and under, you pick it up. Uh, but look it up because I think I've sold that thing for good money. Um, so I'd probably pay even more than five bucks for that record um, because it does sell well and it's um, it brings in a good amount of money. And most people sell it for five or under. Um, so, but also when you're going through this, I'm just looking for things like autographs. Um, you never know when you're going to get a signed copy of something. Um, sometimes we go back to the like rare uh, aspects of like the same thing for DVDs. Of uh, there was a version with a song cut out and now it's not released anymore. Um, the scanners who use um, things like Scout IQ and scan every copy, they're probably going to run into that. Um, you know, and get every one. I just don't spend the time here anymore going one by one by one. Um, and, and the only reason I don't is I assume that scanners have gotten here before me because I'm not here when the media is released every day. Um, and if you're really smart and you come consistently, consistently every day, look at the new sticker color for the week. You see that green sticker color? You only have to look up those every week and you don't have to look at the rest because you already have looked at them. Um, so it should save you some time uh, going through here. Uh, this is me looking up the ones that interested me. You know, it takes time and work to see if something's valuable. Um, and I end up putting all these back because they're just common. Um, but I'm looking through every one, looking at the face. Uh, unfortunately, some artists are really smart and they put their autograph on the inside book. Uh, so you actually have to open it up and open the book to see the uh, signatures. But for the most part, a lot just do it right on the cover. Um, and I imagine most people wouldn't give up their autograph versions of these things. Uh, to Goodwill so this is probably somebody's past and the family members uh, felt there was no value in this stuff or they didn't even know what they had and they just donated it because they want to move on with their life and get back to whatever they're doing um, so you can really find some good things in here and typically if you find one thing you can find multiple of those things because uh, when somebody passes and they put a collection here at the thrift you usually can find the whole collection. Um, that's a Kanye West CD I'd never seen before. Um, never really looked up Kanye West to see if he's valuable. But I'll tell you, most hip hop I do look up. And what I really want is more of the um, rare hip hop, um, not mass produced stuff like gangster rap from the 90s. Those sell so well for me. Um, and in my area, in the Sacramento area, if you don't know, be on the lookout for Black Label Records uh, stuff. Some of their artists are really good sellers. Um, and every now and again, I can find that stuff and it sells uh, between like $30 and $150 a CD, um, depending on which one you found. It looks like I want to, a lot of the high prices here, don't get confused when you're scrolling down. It'll switch from CD to record pretty fast. So I was looking at more of the record sales were going for a while. Good price, but not the CD. And you can see all this takes time. Um, so really, you got to value your time in thrifting. What is the potential profit you can get where you're spending time? If you're looking through the ties 
and they sell between four and eight dollars at the thrift and you can only get about twelve dollars for it and you spend an hour looking through every tie you're losing money overall I mean it takes you time to photo it it takes you time to ship it um, really guard your time and make sure that you're being as efficient as possible um, because you'll burn out really quick uh, the longer you take so you want to watch specialists in their niches uh, figure out how to get better like I said for CDs records uh, even cassette tapes Jason Thrifts is a great one um, there are other ones out there I've taken bookseller I learned how to sell books on Amazon FBA when I was new I no longer do that but I can share maybe in a future video why I don't do that um, but now I sell books on eBay just fine and I love selling books uh, matter of fact the book sections right next to here so I do uh, go look at the books um, when I go into that section but yeah the more uh, published it is the, the it's just valueless um, TI's you know got a lot of copies out there it's nothing on him or uh, the artists themselves it's just there's a everybody bought a copy um, so there's no value in selling it. If you don't know, if you can't find the value on um, eBay, you can also go to a website called Discogs, or you can go to Amazon and look them up as well. Um, you can find other, and then a Google image search is another thing where you can find it on Poshmark or other platforms. I'll just tell you a lot of other platforms you're gonna find a lot higher price uh, for the same thing you can get cheaper on eBay um, even Amazon you can get it cheaper on eBay but for some reason people just love shopping on Amazon um, so they'll pay a higher price um, and if you can take advantage of that and get authorized to sell things great um, but I'll tell you it was becoming harder and harder to sell things on Amazon if you weren't buying it from a wholesaler brand new um, so just not I don't think Amazon's reseller friendly for the used market right now there's a sealed one um, I like fine sealed this looks like it was home sealed um, but if you find a mass produced one sealed you can look it up and if you find a bunch together um, you can bundle them on eBay and still get maybe your minimum profit per transaction by bundling five new CDs for twenty or thirty dollars um, just don't pay five bucks a CD for them obviously um, so you're gonna have to find that at another source where you get them a buck a piece you know at a yard sale or uh, at the swap meet um, I also do really well picking up things from Facebook Marketplace, um, but pro tip, just look to see if they're a reseller and selling all kinds of other things. Um, you can uh, buy a huge lot of already sifted through um, CDs and get really no value out of it unless you can turn it into money. Now, if you know you have a place where you can sell them two bucks a pop, go for it. But you're going to hold on to these for a long time. I have two big boxes of CDs that I bring to the swap meet every time. I probably sell five to ten every weekend. That's And that I have to carry them out. I have to put them away. Um, so I make maybe 20 bucks a weekend off of those CDs. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, but they do sell over time. But you got to find that right buyer who's looking for a deal. And I'll tell you... I'll tell people sometimes even a dollar a CD and they just snub up their nose and they walk off. They want it 10 cents. And I'm just not there for the 10 cent guy. If you want something free, I'm not your booth. I'm not your guy. Um, I'm sinking my time in to looking for this stuff and hunting it to bring it to you. Uh, so it's not really fair to ask for no, you know, things for free from somebody who's reselling. Um, because we have to make a living and become a, a business that is there for the long run so we can keep finding these great finds to bring 
to the customers out there who uh, don't have the ability or time to get out and find these things or they're just not in that area because every region has very specialized stuff that you can find only you can find it more often in uh, that area so I'm just looking through all the books here I'm looking for vintage I'm looking for uh, something unique a title that just stands out that um, is different than the rest but like niche uh, if you can find something that's really niche that's not mass produced uh, they tend to do better um, I'm assuming all scanners have been through here so really scanners go through all the things that have a barcode on it I'm gonna go for the things that don't have a barcode on it um, that's gonna be where they probably didn't do the due diligence and look it up or they looked it up and they found a third printing of the first edition copy and it wasn't as worth as much but the first print the first printing of the first edition is worth a ton of money um, so you gotta know how to look up books I think I am gonna do a book on uh, a video on that uh, this one's called the fur and leather workers union this looked very uh, interesting so I was it was worthy of me I'm putting it in the back cart uh, to look it up if you put it in their cart nobody should be taking it from you but if you leave it out and you're not holding it um, somebody else can pick it up and that's fair game so get in your cart before you look it up and finish looking um, I will tell you that book ended up being a first edition um, it sells very regularly I think for around 35 bucks uh, and all the dust covers on them were ripped and torn like that one so I'm just super stoked that I found something um, out of the masses of books here really quick uh, that sells for decent but I'll tell you I've been selling books a while now over a two years or a year and a half um, and it just takes time and experience to go through and, and start to get a feel for what sells well and if you're more of a, a bookworm um, I think you get there faster because you start to know the old publishers first where you can look at the bindings um, you know certain authors that are rare or uh, maybe their first editions here's some cassettes love cassettes um, cassettes sell for practically nothing so I do source cassettes I'm a lot pickier now I used to sell them for a buck or two or you know maybe I would sell them for three bucks a piece um, and get two dollars profit because I pay a dollar a cassette here um, but I'll tell you sometimes these things come back return because they don't play or people claim they don't play um, and they're just not worth the time testing and doing all the things uh, to make sure so um, I really don't like to list them anymore unless they're gonna make me 25 plus dollars a cassette um, but I say sometimes I know that they're a really good cassette and they're very uh, people want them back in their collections so my general rule of thumb is I'm not selling a cassette for less than five dollars um, that's my like bottom price and that, and that means they also pay the shipping um, so if somebody's not really willing to spend ten bucks on a cassette I'm I'm not picking up cassettes that I don't think will spend you know sell for ten bucks on the market records do really well for me I don't do really well at the goodwill with records you can see a lot of records here are falling apart and in poor condition um, they're pretty much grandma's records a lot of these um, I think there was a ton of George Miller band in here um, but I'm looking for your rock rap um, different kind of old school records um, even modern day records but if you find a sealed record go ahead and look that up I mean how easy is it to find an old first edition sealed record it's not so that might not go for very much money but if it's sealed it could that could triple the price um, you could ask for you know more than that for a sealed record if you think it's a decent artist that somebody out there loves that artist um, I think I found recently a Disneyland um, Fantasia like orchestra seat record set and this was after all the record people had been through 
they're always there waiting when the uh, lady brings out the media at my my other goodwill and so I already know that they're there every day when I'm at work because it's around 2 p.m. so I'm still at work um, and they they left it and for whatever reason uh, I picked it up and it, it's already sold it sold within uh, three days for like 25 bucks so I don't know who this artist is but it's signed and it's signed by one of the singers on the front right on the cover um, so yay we found something that's signed so that's worth looking up to see if there's a chance uh, that it sells if you find no record of any sales of an artist and you have it signed you're taking a big risk to put it on the market but it's it could be worth the risk because you never know that one person's looking for it and they have a connection with the artist um, I'll tell you I do pick up that record um, they her their albums sell okay for like ten bucks five to ten bucks but I found a signed version that sold for 20 uh, that was signed by both artists um, so I think I I think I paid two bucks for that record and I think I'm gonna get between fifteen and thirty dollars for it at least that's what I'm gonna try to do um, and worst case scenario I bring this to the swap meet I ask for two bucks uh, it sells pretty quickly and I get my two bucks back to invest in something else um, so you can see I use the swap meet as a blowout of bad decisions in my reselling sometimes um, but uh, that's great to have that type of uh, outlet uh, so that you can move on and undo some of these mistakes and recapture some of your capital back. Um, but I don't find anything else in here. It's all really old stuff. Um, nothing was so unique that I wanted to look it up. Boo. All right, this is me looking it up. It sold right there for twelve ninety nine, uh, or selling for twelve ninety nine. I I copy and paste it into here to do my research. I think it's what six bucks or something down there for that first listing. These are what are they listed for not really doing a good job showing you how many are listed maybe I'll get to that I'm now checking the soul completes there's that signed one by both artists eight bucks I thought and that was an auction um, auction prices don't go for as much um, especially on things like that you want to do a a listing and put a higher price out there somebody who really wants that might pay 30 bucks for it and you just let it go for hoping that somebody you're gonna get two bidders to have a bidding war on it for something that cheap uh, it's better just to do a single listing I'm also checking discogs here when you get down on the record they kinda have a low medium high price so you can see the high price is 25 bucks you typically your high price is a brand new mint condition but maybe even autographed, right? So I think I can at least get closer to the 15. But if I can turn two bucks into 15 bucks on a record, uh, that's a great day. Now I'm checking the record. It's a 1986 record. Make sure it's in good condition. It's mint in here. It, there is no signs of use even on this thing. Um, so I think they just got it signed and never played it. So we did end up keeping that, and I'll, maybe on a future video you'll see it sell. Um, I'll start to do some sell what sold videos. I'm running over here to the jackets. Um, you always want to look at the jackets while you're here. I do decent, some of my best profitable stuff that's over 20 bucks of profit comes from the jackets. It doesn't take long to go through the jackets. Um, I just gotta fight the bums and get there before they steal them. California's just crazy with the unhoused population problem. They're just stealing everywhere and we're letting them.
and I typically um, pick less from the smaller sections. I'm pickier in the small sections. When you get to large and above, I start to get a little bit more um, less picky, I guess. My, my English is great. Um, forgive me, I'm more of a math major than an English major. Let me know if those guest jeans were anything. I, I looked at that tag and it looked vintagey to me, but I moved on pretty quick. Um, I don't do very well with jean jackets, so um, I'm looking for old Levi jeans, jean jackets, uh, mostly. I'm now heading towards the, the larger size items, but there's also somebody looking at them coming towards me. Um, being new to being a filmer, uh, while I'm thrifting, which makes me one-handed on top of that. So please accept my apology if I have bad shots. But I'm also trying to do this one-handed while holding a camera um, so you can get the best shot of the tags. Um, but there's somebody coming at me where I'm going to kind of ditch out and let them have the section uh, just so I don't blast them on camera. But also uh, I can just circle back to that side uh, after I look at the next section. I don't need to like hop around them and try to get there first. Uh, I love this uh, Stay Weird sweatshirt, but uh, it's um, unbranded. Some of the best stuff's unbranded. You buy it for yourself, not for anybody else. Um, so yeah, I pulled off. Now I'm in the shirts. They've kind of piled a lot of the shirts and hoodies together. So. I don't get a lot of value from shirts, especially small size shirts. Um, so I skip for the most part most of them, but I'm, I love uh, hoodies. Uh, there are some hoodies that do really well. Um, so I like to look through and jerseys, if you can find a good jersey. Some of these are kind of like off brand. I'm not even sure what the jersey's for. Um, this is more like the athletic section, so there's a lot of polos in here, but I'm really picky about polos. Um, I've not found a lot of the brands that you hear about from other resellers with the good uh, golf brands, so I'm pretty sure somebody's getting to them before me um, and picking them up every day. They weren't on the rack when I actively looked. That's probably where I would have found it. But somebody's doing a good job. Here's the wasting the time at the ties um, I actually like ties so for me I don't mind spending my time at the ties um, because sometimes I'll take them for myself but I also like learning about the ties um, just because it says made in Italy and silk doesn't mean it sells for a lot um, but that's part of the key um, to some of these ties but also the print I, I don't know how many Grinch ties I bought and uh, Dr. Seuss this and that um, but they just don't sell for a whole lot um, but I do find designer ties from here, time to time and they, they sell around uh, 15 to 25 bucks um, so I'll look at them that's thumbs up to eliminating racism uh, if you don't know I want my channel to be super positive um, and I don't like anything about uh, people spending energy on hate or bad uh, energy uh, what well, we got one life to live uh, I want everybody to feel included and accepted and just get out there and get after uh, whatever you're into um, we can all win we don't all have to mutually exclusively like succeed over others um, hence this channel is here to help share anything I learn with you guys um, so that you can go out and be just as successful as me I don't think you're gonna prevent me from finding good things because that still that changes and evolves every day what's worth something today is not going to be worth something tomorrow um, so you have to stay on top of where the trends are going and what sells or not this shirt I'm I'm still guessing second guessing whether I should have picked it up or not um, it's a local shirt but it looked very vintage um, and it had some cool colors on it I ended up leaving it. Um, I think it wasn't single stitched. It was a double stitch. But I I probably should have looked it up. Regrets. 
But unless you find a band t-shirt or a really old skateboarding t-shirt or something in here, um, you're really not going to get much. Um, and then there's a lot of knockoff uh, band t-shirts out there. Um, I like Batman shirts uh, from the original era. Um, if you see a non-tag on the back, you know it's modern. Um, but for the ones with the tag on the back, sometimes in the artwork they'll have the year that it was printed, and sometimes it doesn't match. It'll be a year of when that logo was printed, but it wasn't that year of shirt, which is really confusing. Why can't manufacturers put the year they manufactured on a tag somewhere uh, so we know? I had a really cool coloring. It was some beer bar, um, some location, but I like the back of it. But not so much that I want to sink my money into it so I can't buy the next thing. When these racks are packed tight, there's no room to really show you and see for myself uh, the tags in the fronts. Um, so I'm trying to do my best here to show you guys, but just know it's pretty hard because um, they're just jam-packing these racks. Um, this is more the dress shirts, flannels. Uh, they put their Hawaiian shirts over here. So, and I think these are the more casual shirts, button-ups. Um, I do a lot better in this section than most. I think people tend to skip, especially the long sleeve section. They tend to skip, but um, every now and again I find good stuff rain spooner uh, type Hawaiian shirts cross collectability with the great print and it's a sports team um, but there's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't recommend uh, picking up um, like Cook Street um, Hawaiian shirts are very common so good luck trying to sell Cook Street for over eight bucks um, and they're asking five um, I like these Ringler um, type uh, pearl button shirts for the Western. They do really well for me. They don't do really well with stains. I don't put those in my store. So I show you the stain and I move on. Uh, stick and move, right? Uh, I was in the Army, so you might hear a lot of Army terminology out of me. Uh, I don't think you ever get fully rid of it. Um, but I stick and move uh, on to the next one. Because when I'm doing this, I'm not with my family either, right? So I want to get done with this and get back uh, to the home front, see some people, um, and spend some time. But yeah, I'm looking for better brands, uh, nicer quality shirts, really great prints again, just like I said at the racks. Um, but you're less likely to find it over here. But I would still say people don't know specific brands so even the best thrifters don't know everything uh, so you can have a hundred thrifters come through here and totally pass up really good things um, and I think you'll see shortly I do find something right here in the section um, where I'm shocked um, that nobody picked it up so I, I ended up picking it up but I'm I did a video on Dixon flannels I look at every flannel I can tell the Dixon print from a mile away, um, but I like flannels just being from Southern California. Um, so I'm always looking for really good flannels in con good condition. This is a Western shirt, I believe. Um, I'm looking it over, quality control checking it to make sure it's uh, really worth picking up. I think I do get it, but my camera's upside down. Sean, straighten your camera. I think it might have done an auto flip here. Um, let me see if I can fix the video. My apologies for all the rookie moves here. I'm new to editing and videos. So if you're watching uh, this through, uh, you'll think, why did he say that? Well, the video was flipped and now I've gone back and fixed it while I'm doing the voiceover over the video. Um, so it should look the right way now as we're going through. Um, but I want to go for the more raw, authentic me uh, versus the very flashy, over-edited videos. I uh, hope you like this kind of content. Let me know if you want me to talk about other topics or stories and share more. 
Um, has anybody seen these Levi's white tab shirts? I, I just didn't know uh, if they're worth anything. I, I should look it up. I think I found four today in this section that were just like that, but um, that polo shirt was a little weathered. Uh, it looked like it had been worn a lot, so I didn't pick it up. I didn't know this brand of flannel, but it had a nice quilted inner lining. Um, probably should have looked it up, but I ended up passing and moving. And right now I'm being super picky about clothes because I have a limit of how many clothes I source uh, based on the rack in my garage now. I don't want to exceed the rack uh, with shirts and it's starting to pile up. Uh, so I want to sell a bunch more before I uh, start filling it again. Especially when you're saying uh, $5 to $10 a piece of, piece of clothing. You start making bad choices. Oh, this is the Vineyard Vines uh, flannel that I found. Right in the middle of everything. Uh, size large. With great colors. No flaws on this thing. Uh, and I think they wanted, uh, yeah, $5.99. Uh, so to me, that's a great pickup. I think we can at least make 10 bucks or more on that. Um, but yeah, so if you sink a bunch of money into, let's just say, 200 pieces of clothing at $5, right? That's $1,000 sunk. And when are you going to get that back? When are you going to get the return and how much? If you're only making 5 bucks off it, that's really just not that much. Uh, but if you can make $25, $30 off that 5 then you would hope to have that back in about 90 days return. Um but even maybe 120 days for us that have a harder time sourcing high sell-through rate items. Um, but you definitely don't want things to take two years to sell or never sell or sell for $2 return. Uh, so don't go out buying everything thinking you're the expert when you're not. Always reevaluate. Am I doing the right thing? Am I um, oversourcing something that's probably not worth anything? Constantly evaluate yourself. and get used to maybe undoing bad decisions and getting out there and trying to sell these shirts even if you have to sell them at a loss three bucks a pop at the swap meet or something at least you're getting your money back so you can start to buy things that actually sell through um, but I will say I I have some Hawaiian shirts that sit for a while but eventually they'll sell between thirty and fifty dollars depending on the style uh, material and type uh, so it's worth it for me to sit on some of the Hawaiian type shirts but it has to be the right brands but I'm going through everything and another thing I like to pick up is work shirts um, I think I've found several like airline type work shirts uh, Denny's um, Buffalo Wild Wings shirts um, those type of shirts sell really well. Somebody out there, a manager, an employee, wants to look their best, uh, and they want that gear for their job, uh, and they're willing to pay the money. Um, and I typically, they sell within 90 days, no matter what the sell through, because sometimes they're not even out there on the market. Um, so I just, I do really well with work gear. And the other side of that is people who want to wear work gear that don't even work there. I don't, when I was a kid in the 90s, we would wear um, like auto mechanic shirts with the name Bob on it or something. Like we just didn't care. That it was super baggy pants and a work shirt and that was our outfit. Um, totally loved it. I look at this Sharks uh, shirt for a while. It started to look okay and then I just couldn't tell. Like uh, it looked kind of cheesy common not well done um, so I moved on from it but yeah polos uh, I don't find a lot of great polos but one of the brands where I found a uh, a polo that sold pretty well was a bad bunny it was a white polo with like a pink bunny a emblem on the shirt if you don't know what the emblem is maybe it's worth looking up because uh, you just don't know what um, you're gonna find um, but eventually you start to look up emblems and get 
that becomes you know burnt in your brain where you can now start flipping through faster and you kind of know what bucket or category is very common or not common um like if i was to run into polo like big um big pony polo i'm looking it up um all right, one of my favorite categories is jeans. I buy a lot of jeans. I don't really buy a lot of jeans from the thrift store because of that right there, nineteen ninety nine a pair. Um, it's really hard to get above 25 bucks a pair on jeans. Um, I end up, this is women's jeans in the men's section. I have never seen Cheyenne brand before. It's like some Western wear. So I put it in my cart, uh, but at the register, I looked it up real quick and I think there was a hundred listed with like three sold. I ended up putting it back. Um, but what is this? I'm starting to look at these pants and I'm like, I'm looking for Levi. I'm looking for red tags, big E, um, silver tab, older jeans, dated jeans, really cool worn jeans. Um, and almost never can I find that kind of stuff here. Um, but this pair right here starts to get me inquisitive. I have never seen this. This is what the title's about. Have you ever seen Levi's engineered jeans? It's, it got me just, it was baggy at first. So that's the first thing, a good pair of baggy jeans that looked kind of quality. I'm like, I got to check this out further. Um, and then it's nine 99. So if this just sells for 25 bucks it's probably going to be worth the 9.99 well lo and behold i go to search this thing up and they're selling like 35 dollars um plus on these engineered jeans i had never seen it before um so i hope you don't feel like i totally grabbed your attention just for that i thought i had never seen it i looked through a lot of jeans um so i never knew to look for levi's engineered jeans but that was definitely one um, and I will eventually do a jeans deep dive, I think, for Levi's. Because um, I do really well on Levi's, especially Levi's vintage. Um, but you got to get them at the right price. And paying 15 bucks a pop is not the right price. Um, it helps to do storage lockers because I can find them um, for cheaper. Another thing, if you're having a hard time finding things at the thrift... Go to areas where people aren't sourcing, and most people don't source the sports coats and suits. I find this, this is a Levi's corduroy jacket for $7.99, but if you look on the inside, it's also got the vest and these wooden buttons. There was flawless. Um, I didn't even look this up. I totally picked it up and put it in the cart. I think that'll sell. I think somebody's going to find that really cool, uh, and I'll wait. For however long it sells, I'm not. I didn't even care on sell through rate on that. But I go through here and I, while I'm pulling, I'm feeling the fabric. I'm feeling for that like really cool wool feel, and then I'm also looking at the prints. Um, so I'm not looking through every one, especially one handed. Um, on on suits, you really gotta. It's a two handed operation because you gotta open it up. You gotta find out if it's designer by who. Um, and then there's material tags inside the pockets um, where you can see that it's like wool uh, or whatever material it's made out of. And sometimes I don't even know who the designers are. I just know that it's a cool looking jacket. But if I see a flaw or anything, I'm, I'm off to the next one. And I'll say nine out of 10 suit coats you shouldn't buy uh, that you think you would pick up. Because there's a flaw somewhere you're missing. You're, it's missing a button. There's a tear in the sleeve. There's pit stains. There's some type of snag or moth ball, moth damage. Be super cautious. But also, like this Lauren Ralph Lauren, I like picking these up. Uh, they tend to sell well for me, especially at $7.99. And this one has the pants in there. So $7.99 for a coat and pants does a lot better uh, but in here there was see that like white fabric stretch there there was just some quality issues where I moved on but usually the suit coats alone are $7.99 but the pants with the suit coat for $7.99 and it's Lauren Ralph Lauren which is kind of the bottom model but still a good model 
totally pick them up. Or at least look them up. But usually you can find they sell decently. But yeah, I'm also looking at just the coolness factor of what they look like. Um, can I see somebody that I know wearing them? Um, or would I wear it, you know, at, at a dinner party or something? Not that I go to a lot of dinner parties. But yeah, if if you're having a hard time finding profitable items, I don't see a lot of resellers at the suits and sports jackets. So uh, get over there, dig in, and uh, add another dimension to your uh, arsenal there um, because they do bring some good money if you do the research uh, and you find the stuff that sells pretty well. Um, I make some decent money off suit coats. And usually inside the pockets are the size, the material, uh, a lot of manufacturer information in there. So you just kind of got to dig in and pull out the tags. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for watching my content. Um, I do uh, want to get better and do more of these type of videos. You'll see new nuggets or I'll try to share different information each time. Uh, go to my some of my later videos and you'll see uh, other nuggets of things I share and I'll try to switch up sections uh, to provide more value. Please take the time to like and subscribe now for me. Uh, it helps me uh, see what you value and what you want to see. Um, but also uh, it helps others to find my channel. I definitely want to get more subscribers and watch time hours. So anything you can do to help me out, I much appreciate it. Um, I love doing the YouTube thing on top of reselling because um, I'm already spending the time doing it myself. But why not share with you guys what I'm doing and how I'm doing it uh, so you can learn too. Uh, so I find value uh, in doing that. I've met a lot of people who want to know more about this. Uh, so that caused me to uh, share my story. Um, I have a, my own unique story and being a part-time reseller that works full time is uh, an experience that not a lot of YouTubers I watch have uh, because they are going out and doing this full time. Um, through this section, I'm just looking for uh, old vintage pants or maybe golf pants, uh, seeing what's out there. Because um, every now and again, you can run into um, a misplaced pair of pants. Uh, in one of the sections um, and then here at the end I look up those Levi's engineered pants um, definitely looking to see for sell through rate um, and how much they go for and would you believe these things are going for $45 or more what a great find uh, again my name is Sean with Unearthed Treasures we'll see you on the next one keep grinding keep learning have fun and be kind.